Welcome to Watch Symposium, I'm Austin. All right, so Hydronauts, Tudor Hydronauts, reference 89190, I think. Let's check. 89190, yes. All right, so now typically I wear the, the black one, but Maynard in Japan is here, and he wanted to see the blue dialed one, so I broke it out today, and I'm glad I did because this is a, Beautiful watch. I I like this the most. And this was the first Hydronaut that I got. And I liked it so much, I got the black dialed one. Alright, so as you can see, it's got kind of a a purpley blue dial. And like Mater's GS, GMT, and Stoa, it looks different in different lights. Sometimes it pops, sometimes it doesn't. Right now, it's not popping so much. In fact, it looks kind of black. If I were to tell you this is a black dial to watch right now, you'd probably believe it. But you can kind of see the blue if I sort of angle it towards the light. And if we compare it to the black, it's pretty evident this, that it's a different color. What do you guys like? I think this is more conservative. You know, the, the black on the bezel matches the black of the dial but that's just a really pretty shade of purple or blue yeah I like them both but if I had to choose one I'd choose this one just because it's different I mean I have so many black dialed watches as Maynard was pointing out today so yeah anyway I had the the bracelet off because I'm going to put it in the ultrasonic cleaner and this is um, a solid in-link bracelet but unlike the solid in-link bracelets of Rolex uh, the in-links do come off so we have the Rolex-esque spring bars and then the in-links here and you can see they are they're solid but that is so nice when they do just stay on the bracelet and you know you don't have pieces floating around. So it's always kind of nice to, to look at a watch without the bracelet. See the details. You can see the serial number here. And then over here, the reference number. And one interesting thing about the cases of these Hydronauts, and I, I can't figure it out, and so, you know, if you know what's up with this, let me know. But you have the lug holes here, obviously, but if you look inside, there's another hole. It's not drilled all the way through. Let me try to focus. Right there. And it's like something you would expect to see on a no-holes case, but it doesn't look like you could hold a spring bar and it's on every every lug there it is other side so if you guys have any clue what that is let me know I would like to know all right so what can we say about this watch? Well, yeah, this was my first Hydronaut, and when I got it, it was, as I've mentioned in other videos, it was dusty, and I suspect that's because nobody was uh, thinking about buying it for months or years. And I probably could have gotten a discount on it, but I didn't. I was just so like thrilled to get it that I just, I just paid. And... They said it was plus, plus or minus two seconds a day. It's about something like plus two. I think is what it was. There's a little tag, and I think they had tested it before they had stuck it in the case. And I wound it and set it. And when I got home, I was getting ready to catch the bus, and I missed the bus because this was five seconds. No, not five seconds. Five minutes slow. And so I thought, okay, what's up with that? And 
And I thought, well, you know, it was dusty, so maybe it just has been sitting around and, you know, the oils have congealed and pooled in certain areas. We'll just see what happens. And in about 48 hours, it was, it was back to normal. So indeed, it had not had many tire kickers checking it out. They must have been really surprised, just out of the blue, randomly, this foreign guy calls them up and was like, hey, you guys still have that hydronaut? And they're like, yeah, the one that's been in there for like two years? Yeah, we still have it. All right, man, I'm coming to see it tomorrow. I found it on Rakuten, and that's usually what I do. I, I search out pieces on Rakuten, and most of those pieces are sold in Tokyo. And so then I find the piece that I want to check out, call about it, ask any questions I want to ask. And if everything sounds good, I go and see it in person. And this is a box and papers piece, and it originated in Hong Kong. And I think by the, around the time that these were being sold and produced, Tudor wasn't in North America. So I doubt you could find a Hydronaut in North America unless, you know, somebody had bought it in another country and shipped it there. Uh, but this this one had come from Hong Kong, and, you know, I don't know the story of it. It's, uh, you know, possibly, I don't know, unpolished, unworn. I don't know. I mean, it, it it's, it's tough for me to tell. Um, it's not as easy to tell on Hydronauts as it is on, um, say, GMTs or subs, you know, with those camphers and those, those bevels. Um, but let's see, there is one, one flaw that I found. Let's zoom in for that. If you look at the 48, the 48 second mark, as soon as it focuses, and you can see the glass up at the corner is chipped. So if I can focus, there we go. So yeah, um, aside from that, it's pretty, pretty flawless. And I don't know if that's because it's been polished. The, you know, this is pretty, pretty minty, so what could have happened is it just might have been sort of a piece in Hong Kong that didn't sell and, you know, somehow made its way to Japan. Or, you know, somebody bought it there and, and wore it and took care of it. Or somebody had worn the hell out of it, sold it, and it was polished. So I don't really know. You know, I have seen these on Rakuten and this part, which is brushed, I've seen pieces, well, not pieces, but I saw one piece and this was shiny, which uh, yeah, it's not supposed to be, obviously, if you look. Um, it's supposed to be matte uh, right here. And uh, it's a really interesting case. I mean, the really hydronauts, the, the best thing about hydronauts are the case and the way the, the bezel just nestles down into that that case. Look at that. And it's, uh, yeah, I mean, just a very interestingly shaped case. That's what really drew me to Hydronauts. And the way, you know, the way that bezel just sits in there. Focusing issues today. All right, there we go. Much better. Look at that. The way it just sits down in there. And if it didn't do that and sat up, uh, the case would be a heck of a lot thicker. So this, this is a this is a eleven millimeter case thickness, and so it's a very very thin watch and one of my biggest gripes with modern tutors is that they're really thick so if this was a way to 
thin out the watch by nestling the bezel in the case like that, then I think it's something they should have continued. And then look at that where the crown is. The crown here perfectly lines up. It, it you know, when you screw it down, uh, it's upright, which, you know, for a person uh, with OCD, that is, that's great. Unlike the black one, which uh, is upside down. But I'm sort of over that. My, uh, my GMT Master 2 Pepsi is completely upside down, as is my Explorer 2. So I, uh, I had to learn to deal with that or go crazy. I chose to deal with it. All right, guys. Well, there we go. Thought I'd get some footage of it before I clean the bracelet. Now, I have no idea about the seals on this watch or the seals on the black one, so I don't take them in water. Um, I could probably do it, and I could probably risk it, but I spend the next, you know, two days checking the crystal for fog, and then, you know, if I do put it away, I think it's a thing rusting in there, you know, so I I have to look into maybe getting them overhauled or um, at least pressure checked. But, you know, overhauling might not be a bad idea, and I think it's going to be a lot cheaper than, say, a Rolex. So I think when I pick up the GMT, actually, I'm going to wear maybe the black one or maybe this blue one and, and uh, inquire about that. All right, guys. Well, take care. Thanks for watching. See you next time.